Hartford County. Thank you, uh, Treasurer Cop, Comptroller Francho, and Governor. It's good to be here before you. Uh, first, let me uh, identify yourself for our record. <laughs> I'm Delegate Rick Infleria. I am the chair of the Hartford County Delegation. And with me is Councilwoman Lasanti. Joining me also is Ben Lloyd, who represents County Executive David Craig, who could not be here because of personal issues. And also we have um, Manley Calhoun, who is a legislative person for Ms. Lasante. Um, it's been interesting and enjoyable sitting here watch you do your work today. So uh, let me start with that. Uh, Harper County is a very small county, and today we had some large problems with ice and down power lines. So, unfortunately, that is the reason why we are here representing the county today rather than the county executive and other people from the Board of Education and from the school system. So I apologize for that. We were called at last minute. But because it is a small county, the issues that we're going to speak to you about are very near and dear to our heart. I can tell you, Youth Benefit Elementary School is a school that my son attended up in Falston. Now, you know, Youth Benefit had a problem at one time that they needed a traffic light at the school, and uh, my son was called to the office, and to go to the office, he had to walk from one building to another building because it's two separate buildings. And he got in the office, and they said, Look, Ricky, you need to go home. Talk to your father. We need this traffic light. We seriously need this traffic light. you got to get it done for us. And fortunately, we did get that done. So he's a powerful young man. He even got uh, the Japanese delegation to come over and visit the governor and get him to sign a proclamation to allow reindeer into the state of Maryland. So uh, we know the school needs what it needs, and we're going to ask for that for Youth Benefit Elementary School. I am um, small county once again. I graduated from Joppa Town High School and needs to be able to move forward with its plannings. It's an old school. It is in need of repairs, and those plans need to be set forth so that in the future we can begin on the needs of Joppa Town High School. And Joppa Town High School was seen as one of the most diverse schools in the state of Maryland, was recognized for that. And it's a school that works very well, has a magnet program for cybersecurity, and Hartford County, as you know, does a very good job forward funding schools, using the money very wisely. There's really never been problems in Hartford County on how we spend the money or how we upkeep the school. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Councilwoman Lasanti so she can speak to the school that's very important to her. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, uh, Governor, Comptroller, Treasurer, members of the, of the board. It is indeed my honor to be here today to uh, ask for your uh, support for lo local planning for Habit Girls High School. I am not only uh, the county council representative for that district, but I'm also the former 1985 class president of Habit Girls High School. Oh, so I can speak very dearly as a as a former uh, former student. Uh, and, and I also need to make regrets for the county executive, who is also an alumni of Havity Grace High School, and Mayor Wayne Darty, who wanted to be here, but we had some ice issues um, up in our community. But I wanted to bring to your attention the uniqueness of this particular school project. A couple of years ago, the Hartford County Council funded a scope study to look at Havity Grace High School because, with your assistance, over the last seven years during my tenure on the county council, we together have completed 37 improvement projects at our high schools, our middle schools, and our, um, our elementary schools. Havity Grace High School is one of the last ones to be done, which is kind of interesting because Havity Grace High School and Bel Air are the two original schools in Hartford County. This project is, is, is unique because it allows us to the opportunity to provide our local government with the opportunity to solve a public safety problem and a flood control problem that has plagued our community for really six decades. The campus that we, that we currently have is bisected by a state highway and a county road. So our, our students right now have to, have to, we have to close a road, allow the students to go from, from classroom to gym, and then they have to cross the state highway for their athletics field. The scope study that we did uh, took a look at our entire, 
our entire parcel, which includes the middle school. And it's a redevelopment of that so that we can combine our middle school and our high school on the same parcel so our students don't have to walk in crossroads and, and be in an unsafe position. But this, this project has another element, and I, I think we've provided to you some, uh, some diagrams of this, of this project. You see, in the city of Habit of Grace, we have an infrastructure problem. Like most old cities, you, uh, we, have, we, we are close, obviously, we are, we're a waterfront community, and as we have grown, we've grown up on the hill. And unfortunately, in those, uh, we have not taken care of our stormwater, and we have not taken care of our sediment. So all the stormwater runoff from the new development has come into our town and, we, and into a tributary of, of the Chesapeake Bay, Lily Run. Lily Run is a very unique uh, creek that runs through the town. And unfortunately, every time it rains, it overflows. It cuts off access to our high school, to our middle school, to our elementary school, but most importantly, to our hospital. It's a very, very critical issue for us. We've been trying to solve this issue for a long time, but the problem is it's very expensive. So what we've been doing for the last three years is what I believe is the most cooperative effort that, that a, a jurisdiction could do. Um, in order to, to, identify, uh, to solve this flood problem, the city of Haverty Grace uh, commissioned a, a study. Of, they spent about $250,000 to figure out how they could control, control this flood and, and get some water quality uh, results. What we found out is the largest parcel, the only parcel that we could do this is on the Board of Education property. So they entered into a, a cooperative agreement with the Board of Ed to try to solve this problem. They actually, they've gone so far now as to apply for a joint permit with the Corps of Engineers. This project, because of the uniqueness of it, where we are adding, we're building a school, we're using that construction for green construction so that we have a recreational component, we have uh, a public safety component, and we have a water quality and sediment control component. We've actually been able to get funding from outside sources. The Environmental Protection Agency, um, through their water quality plan, gave us a, uh, a, a grant with the uh, Center for Watershed Protection, and they actually developed, at, at no cost to the city or the county, a plan for, for us to meet our TMDL through this project. Uh, in addition, the National Fish and Wildlife Federation has, has contributed $100,000 to this project because they see the, the value, and of course, Hartford County and the city of Habitat Grace have as well. So this is more than a construction project. It is a way for us to solve a public safety problem, a flood problem, and get some benefits to our water quality and our sediments and erosion control. However, if you do not approve this local planning, we stop dead on the water, literally. And, <laughs> and we really want to move this, uh, this project forward. So I do and how much is it? This is a request for planning approval planning. at this uh -huh. stage. Okay. We don't have a, an estimate at this point of state participation. So, and it's being held up because of enrollment issues and approval of the feasibility study. The feasibility study, study has been approved by the Board of Education for a combined high school and middle school. We've reviewed the feasibility study and it's the enrollment issue. And I think that what we've identified is that our policies on school construction, which are meant to provide the most efficient use of taxpayer dollars, are actually in conflict with other policies. I'd like uh, Deputy Secretary Kahn to speak about this. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lieber. This is, again, the conflict between the enrollment projections, which are low, um, up against the state's policy of community-based schools that are already existing. This, this is in a sustainable community, which is the targeted state revitalization zone. So what we're looking at is developing a pilot policy so schools like this can still move forward despite what might be lower enrollment projections. And I can speak a little bit to the enrollment. Happy Grace High School is the only school in Hartford County that does not have a magnet program. And that is, with, with the combined middle school, high school, that is what we, want to, that's what we intend to do because we're losing a lot of our best and brightest to other magnet programs. And we have the perfect opportunity with this project to develop a magnet school for environmental protection to look at, we're at the head of the Chesapeake Bay, we're better to look at the sediment and erosion control that's coming from the Conowingo Dam right where it lands at our, at our, uh, at our waterfront. So how long is all this going to take? 
Well, I have a draft policy in hand, and we're working <laughs> with uh, uh, Dr. Lever to move this forward okay, very and, quickly. And so you're saying the feasibility study issue is not I think we, an I think issue. We, we've resolved that. I think the, the critical issue is this policy, and it is on the fast track. It, it absolutely is. Fast track meaning by the end of the session, by the end, yes. by the next time we see it. Yeah, we recognize the urgency of this project. Now, you're at the head of the Chesapeake. Yes. And you're flooding we, already. We're at the confluence of the Susquehanna River. Right. So what are you going to do? You're going to build it in the way that the sea level rises a foot, two feet? You're prepared for all that? Absolutely. We, we, we take that into consideration. And, and we probably know best about that because, uh, so. because we, of all of our water, all of our waterfront construction, all of our planning and zoning in the city has been revised to, to um, prepare for that. Um, this for the particular sea level site rise is, and the is, storm surge. Is, is at a higher elevation. And Councilwoman sits on the uh, Chesapeake. Yes, I, that's why I was asking. Exactly. So this is this is she actually a model lead, of so. what other jurisdictions and other areas, including Washington D.C. Well, well, we believe it is, and quite frankly, we believe it's a model not only for planning and for sustainable communities. It's also a model for how you fund stormwater. I hear that's the big big thing that I hear among legislators. How are we going to fund this? You're going to fund it by thinking differently, by taking a, an opportunity like this and pulling funds from the Board of Education, the City of Havity Grace, from the federal government, from, uh, from, from public safety, from all of these piece, all of these areas to fund a project that is going to have the outcome that we're looking for. Which is why we want this to go forward with planning approval. Mr. Dr. Lieber, we really want this one to go forward with planning approval. <laughs> Well, and, and the studies, the requisite study, feasibility study has been done and approved. So then it's a question of getting the planning. Yes. Thank you. Good. All righty. I'm going to, if I could, if I could just thank uh, Chairman Infolaria for coming up. Uh, you and I served for some time in the legislature. And I was there for 20 years, and I always wanted to be chair of the Montgomery County delegation. And they always said, you know, you're way too blunt to be the chairman. Uh, and here I'm looking at someone who is ten times blunter than I ever was. And you, how did you get to be chairman? And we love him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a matter of uh, time going by and smoothing out a little bit. And I see that was Yeah. Good. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, and Councilwoman, thank you. I just have a quick question, because you all have a, a problem that most state, most counties would love to have. You have excess capacity yes. because of the BRAC yes. uh, initiative, and the kids did not materialize as fast. I believe ultimately they'll be there. But, Dr. Lieber, this may be a question for you. Uh, what is the significance of having a surplus rather than a shortage uh, for your uh, review, are, are we going to be able to take advantage of this uh, surplus space? The surplus the, space in... Oh, abundance of space, I guess, to uh, put it mildly, as far as compared to others, yeah. other yeah. schools, yeah. Yeah. other yeah. systems. That, the seats available. That's right. You see, that is the issue for us, because we look at adjacent schools under our standard policy, and if we take into account adjacent schools, there's an abundance of space... Right. Uh, they have presented some very good arguments about the actual ripple effect of redistricting. It would not just simply be mean moving the kids from Haverty Grace into adjacent schools. It would actually have several ripple effects. But the, the policy that uh, we're addressing here would try to um, consider the school in itself as a community school. Um, we can't ignore that excess capacity in the long run, but we also understand the importance of a community school. Well, if you could keep me in the loop as to the best possible use of that abundant space. I, if I can follow up on that. Yeah, sure. Controller Francho, our delegation this year, you know, for years we have been looking for another VOTEC school to put into the Route 40 corridor, the old traditional VOTEC. And we realize that a delegation, that the state does not have that money. But there's something that we do have in Hartford County. We have a VOTEC that's waiting in line to get into. Mm -hmm. and we have very successful magnet programs in Hartford County. And it's come to the realization, if you can have high-tech magnet programs in individual schools, why can't we have magnet programs for electricians 
and plumbers and carpenters and air conditioning, people that need to go back in the trade. So believe me, we know what we want to do with the excess space in our schools. We want to be able to move students around Harford County to give them the options and the opportunities to take on jobs that people say people don't want to fill, but people do want to fill them. They don't have the trading. We're looking at Northern Harford of having diesel repair up there because someone has to fix that farm equipment. Without that farm equipment, none of us eat. So we want to keep kids living and working in Harford County because Harford County is a beautiful place to be. I'm very proud to represent. Mr. Comptola, also I wanted to mention that as far as the, the excess capacity, right. the other thing that we are looking at, um, Harford Memorial Hospital is building a new hospital in Havre de Grace. And uh, we as the county government with the state government has built a, a, a large nursing, nursing school at our community college. We are, we are working with the community college and the, the leadership of the hospital and the leadership of the school system to see if we can do some type of nurse training program at the, at the school as well. So that, that's another opportunity that we have. Great. I just want to thank uh, Harford. It's a great part of the state. Uh, I gave a Golden Apple Award for volunteerism to Tina Mike, who's probably the lead person yeah. in the state of Maryland as far as teaching financial literacy yeah. to young people. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the, re the hospitality. I also gave Maryland Master's Awards to John Viracula from Emerton Elementary, Alexis Waltz from Aberdeen Middle School, and Kenny Tartarona from is it Milton Wright High School? Wright. Yeah, so fabulous kids. And great, missed you on Monday. Great ambassadors, that's okay. And uh, I visited Red Pump Elementary, Youth Benefits Elementary School, and Pinecrest Elementary School in the last year. Appreciate the hospitality. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Can I mention to you, and I have a little packet here, there are currently in Hartford County 3,518 kids who, while they qualify for free or reduced lunch, do not get a free or reduced breakfast. So it's a fairly sizable little delta there. Uh, Y'all are at 62% of those eligible. In other That's words, we, and, we can, and that woman right there is Ann Sheridan. She's our Secretary of Children, Youth, and Families. Okay, we're going to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, and we've got some things. We're from the government. We're here to help. Yeah. We can. Thank you for putting that. Thank, thank you. Much. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank, thank you. you. You have a good day. You too. Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. Manly, good seeing you, pal. Okay, we are on.